Hey there, my name is Curtis Lucas and you're watching Empire Building. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about whether or not Bitcoin mining companies can remain profitable uh, during a Bitcoin bear market. Or how low can Bitcoin's price go before these mining companies are no longer profitable? So now before we get into this, we're going to have to cover just a few of the basics. As many of you probably are already aware, Bitcoin mining is a very competitive market. Miners are all over the world in many different jurisdictions, and they all are using slightly different uh, equipment and different setups and are paying different rates for power. So because of this, there is a broad distribution of base costs for miners all around the world. But when you add up all of that computing power, what you get is the overall uh, network hash rate. This is a chart of Bitcoin's network hash rate growth uh, since its inception back in uh, early 2009. So it's pretty obvious uh, to anyone who observes this that uh, the amount of power being dedicated to securing the Bitcoin blockchain has been growing along with the price. It's incentive based. And as that hash power increases, so too does the difficulty on the Bitcoin network, meaning it's that much harder to produce new blocks. This is the growth in the uh, Bitcoin difficulty rate uh, on the network uh, over the, the entire lifetime of the network as well. You can see it follows a very similar pattern, but it's not quite so uh, choppy because the difficulty rate is adjusted only every two weeks. So it's a whole lot smoother in terms of uh, the progression of uh, that line. But throughout its history, depending on what's happening at the time and what's happening to the price, you can see that there are periods where uh, the difficulty will drop. Notably, the large one would have been the China Exodus that saw a massive uh, drop in both hash rate and correspondingly uh, the difficulty rate. And that is the metric that ties into what I'm about to talk about in this video. Bitcoin miners vary from the extremely large industrial scale miners to the Bitcoin miner hobbyist who uh, does this in their spare time in their basement. Anybody can contribute, anybody can join. There is no permission required. All that's required is that you are able to uh, acquire the hardware and uh, have an internet connection as well as uh, the appropriate power supply. But that doesn't mean that everybody has the exact same advantages because some will have access to better hardware at cheaper prices uh, and more importantly, cheaper power. The average power cost for the uh, average industrial home in the United States is about uh, 10 to 12 cents a kilowatt hour. But these large scale industrial miners are paying uh, sometimes as low as two cents a kilowatt hour, which means that their average uh, ongoing costs to mine a Bitcoin would be approximately five times less than your average uh, hobbyist miner. So we're going to have a look at the numbers and see how much would it cost uh, a large scale industrial miner to produce a Bitcoin. And for this example, I'm going to be ignoring the uh, hardware costs because really those aren't, uh, while they are important in determining long term profitability, it's not an indicator that we're so much concerned with in this example, because what we're trying to answer is at what point does it become unprofitable to continue mining? It doesn't make any sense to include the cost of the hardware since those are already spent costs. You can't get those back if you stop mining. For this example, I went to Riot's investor presentation uh, where they actually disclose uh, some of their own assumptions since Riot is a uh, vertically, inter uh, vertically integrated uh, a Bitcoin miner. They uh, own and operate their own facilities. So they have much better information regarding what their uh, internal costs are. And down here in the fine print is where you'll find their assumptions uh, that their uh, total costs here to mine uh, or for power comes in at approximately uh, two and a half cents per kilowatt hour 
as well as an operating uh, infrastructure operating cost of a half a cent per kilowatt hour, uh, bringing them to a total uh, all in cost of three cents per kilowatt hour. This would be their operating costs should they choose to continue mining. Now, with that information, we can go to uh, the website whattomine.com uh, and using the parameters of the most uh, commonly used Bitcoin miner, the S19J Pro, uh, which puts out about 100 uh, terahash per second uh, for hash rate, consuming uh, about 2,950 watts. I've inputted the cost at uh, three cents a kilowatt hour, and I even included a pool fee of 1%. As you can see, I've left the hardware cost at zero. Uh, the block reward is estimated automatically at 6.27. Uh, so that does include the approximate uh, fees that Bitcoin miners are getting on average. So with all this data put in, this calculator tells us that uh, each day that miner would be profiting about $15.16. Uh, but more importantly, it's going to be uh, costing them $2.12 for every day that this machine runs. And we can see over here on the side that the time it would take to create one Bitcoin would be 2,205 days. So to figure out the current cost to mine a Bitcoin, uh, we can pull up a calculator here and uh, we can take 2,000, no, 2,205.26 times, uh, that's the number of days to mine a Bitcoin times the cost per day at $2.12. Brings us to $4,675.00. Uh, US dollars to mine one Bitcoin, which is pretty much in line with uh, what we've uh, already come to understand. Obviously, yes, we've seen figures out there that put that number uh, considerably higher, but that is because those figures are calculated uh, taking all expenses that these companies have been putting out, Con not uh, considering the fact that this includes a lot of these capital expenditures that are one-time costs, as well as a lot of uh, share-based compensation that we've been seeing going out in these companies. So that's not very reflective of what their long-term operating costs are. For us to get a really good understanding of that, we would need to wait some time for these companies to reach scale. But the point here is, is that I would place this figure at approximately the lowest cost of uh, the majority of the large scale industrial Bitcoin miners. But the thing that people don't quite understand is that this number is not fixed. It can go up and it could also go down. And what we've been seeing is that because Bitcoin's price is so much higher than the current cost of mine of Bitcoin, uh, everyone is incentivized to increase their operations, to increase the power on the network which is going to increase that overall hash rate and correspondingly the overall difficulty. But obviously the point here is there are still massive margins for these uh, Bitcoin miners, even with these uh, lower prices that we've seen Bitcoin at. It's extremely profitable for these companies under these current conditions. And it's going to continue to be profitable for quite some time. But remember that I said that there's a large amount of the population that cannot get their uh, power at uh, three cents a kilowatt hour. They're paying uh, 10 to 12 cents. In some cases, in some countries, a whole lot more than that. But if we put in here instead of three cents and we use 12 cents a kilowatt hour, then we're going to get a very different result. And um, we do the same math that we just did uh, on that last uh, calculation 2,201. 0.69 times cost per day is now eight dollars and fifty cents brings a total cost of mine of bitcoin up to eighteen thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars so if bitcoin's price was to drop uh somewhere below that or even close to that what's going to start happening is any miners who are operating under those conditions are going to start turning off their equipment because it doesn't make sense to keep mining they could just buy the Bitcoin for less than it costs them 
to produce it or to mine it themselves. There's no more in financial incentive for them to continue operating. And that's assuming they're using this same hardware. There's a lot of S9s currently operating that had been previously turned off because they were unprofitable to operate, but they are currently running in a lot of these farms simply because they still function and they're still profitable. But with a combination of this continuing increase in hash rate and this uh, potential decrease on Bitcoin's price due to it being in a bear market, a lot of those miners are going to be forced to start shutting those, uh, shutting that equipment down. And this is what it looks like when that happens. Uh, this website here, Bitcoin's Difficulty Estimator, keeps track of every single block uh, and where we are in terms of uh, maintaining Bitcoin's average block time of 10 minutes. The average amount of time between blocks uh, should always be as close as possible to 10 minutes. And what the network does is it keeps track of this. And this is an example. So you can see right now, uh, as big blocks are being produced, this is the current block we are uh, at right in this exact moment as I'm recording this. But these red empty blocks, this is where Bitcoin, this is the block number we should be on uh, if we were actually getting blocks every 10 minutes. What this means is Bitcoin's uh, network is running uh, a little bit slow currently because uh, there's obviously a slight drop in hash rate rather than an increase in hash rate, which is what we normally see. This process happens uh, every two weeks in what's called an epoch. Every 2015 blocks, this value gets recalculated. So if we get to the end of this epoch and we haven't been able to catch up uh, to the, the front of this estimation, the, the front of this uh, tracker, then the difficulty will drop trying to retarget that uh, 10 minute block time. So if we run into a scenario where Bitcoin's price drops enough that a, a lot of these other miners begin to shut off their equipment, then that hash rate will drop, which will lead to an increase in block time, which will mean that the number of blocks that we fall behind on this tracker increases. The network will automatically respond by reducing the difficulty making it that much easier for the miners that are still behind. If you are among the lowest cost operators in Bitcoin mining, then it doesn't matter how low that price falls, you will always be profitable because there will always be someone else with a cost above yours that will be forced to shut down first, making it even more profitable for you. And if there's no one able to mine Bitcoin for cheaper than you can, then you will never be incentivized to shut down. And remarkably, these operators, the cost to mine for these operators has always provided a strong floor for Bitcoin's price during bear markets. What we typically see during those periods is Bitcoin's uh, hash rate growth tends to level off and this tends to happen around the halving. The next Bitcoin halving will occur sometime in the year 2024, approximately two years from now. Currently, the Bitcoin halving is estimated to occur approximately 782 days from now on May 5th, 2024. That date will move around as we get closer to it. Uh, again, depending on uh, the average uh, block time that Bitcoin experiences during that time between now and then. But that's always a major factor in uh, determining what that cost to mine a Bitcoin is because it's the single event that has the biggest impact at any given time. And it has always signaled a beginning of a new bull market. As of right now, there's no reason to believe that would be any different this time around. And um, we've also seen that after we've had our, our first run up, it usually the second run up doesn't occur until after that halving. Now, Having said all that, halvings don't have the same impact that they once did. The number of Bitcoin that's produced is going to get reduced by another uh, 3.125 uh, Bitcoin. In the first halving, that was reduced by 25 Bitcoin and reduced by 12.5 Bitcoin the second time. 6.25 the time after that. So the point is, is that the effect, the impact of the halving becomes less and less over time. And what matters more at this point is uh, network adoption. How many more people can Bitcoin bring into the fold? How many more use cases can it be identified for? 
obviously, yes, I've been bearish for quite some time now, and it remains to be seen whether or not we are going to suffer through a two-year uh, bear market. Even the last time around, we had a little mini bull market uh, that occurred uh, between the first one and, and the uh, official start of the next bull market. Bitcoin's price went from uh, $3,400 all the way up to $14,000. Most of this over the course of just a few months. So anything can happen at any time. But the point that I was making here is that no matter what happens, these Bitcoin miners, this is the worst case scenario for them. The worst case is that they begin having to potentially sell uh, a portion of the Bitcoin that they mine. They won't even have to sell all of it to maintain their operations. If they're still profitable, then they don't have to sell any of the coins that they've mined to date. They can sell maybe 60 or even 80% of the new coins that they mine and hodl the remainder. And they can sustain themselves indefinitely uh, with that practice and the most successful ones will continue doing that and then and then with any luck they could begin timely increasing their operations in preparation for the next cycle which as I've said traditionally happens following the next halving but if we've learned anything from this past cycle is that what happens traditionally is not something that we can necessarily rely on but yes it's not like these companies are going to start losing money just because bitcoin's price goes down or that they don't have sustainable business models they do but that's when it's really going to matter who has that lowest cost to operate because those are the ones that could wait out any storm no matter what happens so i hope that helps and that it explains things a little bit better uh, you have a better understanding of how these uh and in, how this incent these incentive structures actually work the more you dig into this the more elegant and beautiful you re you realize uh it was when uh, bitcoin's creator originally developed this it's remarkable how simple but robust this system is able to uh account and adapt to changing market conditions without the need for anyone to intervene. It's incredible. And the more I look into it, the more uh, impressed I've been. If there's any other questions you have, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Well, that's all for this one. Now let's get back to empire building.